Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the heart of God so that you can call on God your Father and come boldly and confidently to His throne of grace to receive mercy for your failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. That appropriate, well-timed help coming just when you need it. God wants you to know that he can be trusted and you can put your confidence in him to answer your prayers when you call upon him in prayer. He wants you to know him personally through experience of your own so that your prayer life and your life with him would be a personal experience with God as if he was your very best friend because he is. God wants the absolute best for you and he proved it by sending his son to have a relationship with you by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus died to give you life and to give that life eternally with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So trust in God, depend on him, and he'll show you the way in which you should go. And one of the things that he shows you is that work itself is a gift of God. God doesn't punish you by making you work. His answer to you is that he loves you and he's given you the very gift that he has in himself, the gift of work to do those things that he wants you to do and to do all things as unto the Lord, not to men, giving glory to God the Father. The Bible tells us that Work is a gift from God. In Genesis 2.15, he says, Then the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Work was to tend and to keep it. They were gardening. Gardening's work. God gave to Adam and Eve the gift of work to garden the I mean, to garden the garden of God, to be the gardeners of the garden of God. God uniquely designed each of us with talents and gifts and abilities. And then he puts in us the opportunities and gives us the responsibility to develop and utilize those gifts as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us and directs us in all the affairs of life. His divine plan includes for his people called by the name of Jesus to provide for themselves by the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has placed in them to do the work that they needed to do. When God put Adam and Eve in the garden, they didn't know how to garden. God had to give them the wisdom and the instinct and the desire and the opportunities to hone their gifts and their talents and their abilities to garden and to tend the garden. God gave Adam the work of naming all the animals. That requires God giving you the power and giving you the desire and giving you the input to do the things that God created you to do. And God created you to do something if you're listening today. Because God planned for you. He planned your life and wrote all your days in his book because he has a great plan and a great life scheduled and planned for you to fulfill on his timetable in his way with his power and his might to accomplish through him so that you can see the glory of God working through you and he encourages you to believe in him and trust in him to do greater than you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine in your job, in your life, and in all the affairs of life. God, from the beginning in Je- Genesis literally was working with his hands. You see his hands in the dirt. He tells you in Genesis 2.17 that he did manual labor and he didn't consider it beneath himself. For the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. That was God creating man. God taking his hand and scooping in the dust of the earth and breathing in man and making him a living being in Genesis 2, 7. Even in the creation of the heavens and the earth, you see God is working. God says that he worked and then God worked to create the heavens and the earth and all the intricate parts of all that's involved in that. He tells you that 
he worked and then he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. God is telling you that work is in his plan for you. He is the one who worked and he puts in you the desire and the ability to work. And it's the enemy that tries to turn you away from work and not fulfill the gift that God has given you, knowing that it'll bless you by turning you away because somebody didn't treat you right or somebody didn't do something right and they didn't like the way you talked to your boss and the boss didn't like the way you talked to him. That's not it. God's given you the gift and the talents and the abilities to express himself through you to bring him glory. Just as Jesus said, my father has worked even until now, and even now he is working. God never ceases to work. He is doing his divine work all the time. And he made you in Christ Jesus. It's no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you. And he's given you his power, his desire, his wishes, and his good pleasure to do what he does. And God works. God works miracles. God works mighty deeds. But God also worked and built things. He built the universe and all that's in it. He created man out of the dust of the earth. And he created you for his purpose and his intent and his will. Scripture teaches us that all of life is spiritual. Work is just as holy as prayer and communion. Because prayer is what God prefers. And you're sitting there and you're exchanging your wishes and ideas and desires for his wishes and ideas and desires. And God tells you from the beginning he was working. So I can tell you that God thinks that work is holy. There's everything that you do is holy unto the Lord or it's a sin. God says that he made you holy and that he lives in you. And that he gives you the power and desire to want to do those things that please him. And one of the things that pleases him is to do the same things that he does. And God worked. God loves you. And this is a radical different lens compared to what the world says. And the Greek philosophers said at the beginning of the first century in their dualism where they tried to separate out spiritual activities from non-spiritual activities. That's not true. The Bible teaches that every moment of your day is to be infused with the potential of pleasing God. This is a distinction between spiritual and non-spiritual for all those who have surrendered their life to Jesus Christ and made him Lord. Since our work is a way to please God and every day is ripe with the potential to make a meaningful difference in the life of someone else, you have to look at your job as a gift from God. You have to look at your boss as a person whom you're ministering to as if unto the Lord. For whatever you do in word or deed, God says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him in Colossians 3.17. And then he backs it up and he says, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not to men, knowing that from the Lord you'll receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. The Bible teaches us that we should see work in a totally different lens when you look at what the scripture says. It says when you work, you're ultimately working for God. And when you use every moment as a spiritual act of worship, you're looking toward the reward of the Lord Jesus Christ himself that he's going to give you. There's both an earthly reward, which is your paycheck and the profits that you receive, as well as a heavenly reward for hearing what God says to you for doing all things as unto him and not to man. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then he has crowns for you for doing the things that he built you to do. God will reward you eternally for working diligently and wisely today as unto him and not to man. He will also help you to be able to do your work with your gifts and your talents and abilities. Biblically, the Bible doesn't punish you by making you work. Instead, it's the divine blessing and design of God to give you the gift of work which he himself has. Jesus came to earth. And when he did, he didn't come to 
live in leisure. He came to work. He says from the very beginning at age 12, I have to be about my father's business. Business is work. And then you find that he was a carpenter. He worked with his hands, just like the father worked with his hands. And then you find that you do your work as Jesus did his work for the glory of God. That that will give you great joy because God places the gift of work in you who is the author of work and who's the one that gives you the desire to work and it's the one that will open the opportunities for you to work and he will do it in many, many ways. For you are God's workmanship, he tells you, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them, as he tells you in Ephesians 2.10. God's plans for you are so that you can work and to do his good pleasure. And it doesn't have to be great things. It can be simple things. God ordained that work be done in his power and in his wisdom and his strength. And that will always bring results that you will see not only on earth but in heaven. But it doesn't have to be a world-changing work. And it can be any work that's useful to others and done for the excellence of just deserving to please God. Not as a work unto God to please God, but because God living in you is pleased to do it through you because he loves you and he loves others through you by giving you the gift and the abilities and talents of work to work around them to be the light that shines on a hill that shows them the way in which they should go. For we all need light. We all need light means encouragement. We all need the encouragement of others. And so thank you, Father God, for encouraging us and helping us. I thank you that you watch over us. It's my prayer, Father God, that you forgive us for looking at work as anything other than a gift of God. Forgive us, Father God, for our work is something that we do that you have gifted us to do and given us the talents and abilities to do. And we just praise you and thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are Lord over our spirits, souls, and bodies. And you've been made in us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification, redemption. And you wish above all things that we should prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. And you've given us the ability to work, whether with our hands or our thoughts or our minds or bodies, Father God, I just ask that you would multiply that gift of work in us, those gifts and those talents and those abilities, and that you would make us your light to shine on a hill so that we become a beacon of hope for others, Father God. It's not in the way that we do things, but it's in the way you do things through us that makes the difference. So I ask you, Father God, that we can be strong in you and the power of your might, and that we lean not to our own understanding of what we think work is, but what you say work is, and that we see work from your viewpoint and see that you've been working since the beginning and you're still working unceasingly now. And you give us your ability and your power and your might through your Holy Spirit to accomplish the same things that Jesus did. And Jesus said we have to be about our Father's work. And Colossians, it tells us that all that we do We do unto you and not to men that we will receive the reward from you. So empower us to be that light in work in all that we do to please you and bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in. May God bless you and richly give you those things that you truly need because he knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And remember, God loves you. I love you, and that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Until next time, remember, trust God and leave all the consequences to him. He'll always show himself faithful on your behalf in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.